Good afternoon, thank you very much. We're going to be talking about temperatures and gas emissions in piggeries, in particular, fattening piggeries. So this study was carried out as part of a much bigger survey called Temporalis. Un projet qui est financé par so that was actually a study which was funded by ADEM, which was the temperature in piggeries and reducing ammonia emissions from slurry. So it was broken down into two parts. The first part was to actually assess... No, I don't know what's going on here. No, stop. Je ne touche à rien. Qui visait à étudier la température... So, what we want to do is assess... Look, I don't know what's going on with the screen here, but we're going to continue. So we want to look at the, t the impact of ambient temperature and also the temperature of slurry. And hopefully next year the presentation will actually work. So where does this study actually come from? Well, it comes from the fact that we have generally standard practice of 22 degrees. And that is a that is a baseline temperature for our pigs. Now, if we look up in Northern Europe, be it Denmark or the Netherlands, their baseline temperature is more 18 degrees. And we say that apparently at 18 degrees, they have the same zootechnical performance and they actually have lower ammonia emissions. Now, I'm going to press the button. Who knows what's going to happen? There we go. So in Northern Europe, they say that there is a drop in ammonia emissions. Sorry, I can't work in these conditions. So there is a very, uh, very tenable balance between ammonia and ammoniac, which is... Uh, hopefully, if it pops up on the screen, just for a few seconds there, you'll see that it's due to pH balance. And obviously, if you have colder temperatures, then you can tend to actually limit the presence of ammonia in effluent. So all of that led to us to think about the impact of temperature. And we were actually able to build uh, a heat-controlled unit called the, Therm the Thermotech. And it is run like your regular fattening facility with pre-tank effluent storage. And you can actually maintain the temperature at whatever temperature you want it to be. So I'm going to press a button, but I hope it's not going to break the system. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see our poster, which is out in the room, which is all about the design of our heat regulated room. Or if not, you'll at least get the readout in the final report from this symposium. Now, obviously, we wanted to study three different temperatures, 16, 18, 22 degrees. So three temperatures. And we looked at animals ranging between 30 and 115 kilograms. And we were able to compare it with some of our baseline data from a control room, a standard room heated to 22 degrees with your very regular di con conventional dynamic ventilation. And with that, we're able actually to attest, assess the three temperatures compared to conventional temperatures. Now, again, in our thermotech, climatech, or our climatotech, everything was maintained at those key temperatures. Other aspects that we're looking at so the temperatures, they are referred to as C16, 18 and 22. The baseline was T22. So pigs were weighed once they came in. All of their food was weighed and also the carcasses at slaughtering as well. We also looked at the water. The, uh, the food was weighed daily and, uh, and also the slurry was the depth of the slurry or the sludge was measured every 15 days We've taken a sample of that to determine how much of the sludge on the ground was actually made by animals we also looked at gas emissions that was uh, measured every three minutes we also have infrared testing to determine ammoniac and we had the other detectors in there to look at nitrates and methane and then every temperature reading was made every 15 minutes. 
I think it's going to be interesting to look at the final result and the temperatures that we reached for those four rooms. So we actually had 26 degrees for the baseline room, which was the T22 room with plus or minus 1.4. Obviously, when you put in a, uh, a set, or when you set a temperature, obviously it's going to vary a bit because you have uh, outside temperature and also heat coming off the animals. So can we just go back a slide? And here, if we also look at the, the three first rooms, we're able to maintain temperatures perfectly in line with what we wanted to look at as part of our study. That said, the 22 degree room, it was in a hot time of the year, so it was a bit hard to maintain the temperature at 22 degrees. Now, if we look at the zootechnical aspect, so again, we are going to look at C16 and C18. And then we compared C22 with T22. So in term, when you, we compared the first weight and the final weight at slaughtering, there was, an, there was no major impact there. However, when we look at the other levels, it's the general weight again, the, the transfer ratio and all of the total weight. The T22 level, we have good performance, but the general weight gain, but also for the transfer levels and for the overall added value, there's no statistically significant impact on performance. That said, one caveat, and I'll talk about that at the end of my presentation, when looking at the transfer conversion ratio, there is something that I would like to talk about there. Now, when looking at ammonia, ammoniac, we have the T22, which is at 2.87 kilos of ammonia per, uh, per, per area for a year. Now, again, we, we've already carried a number of studies in our facilities in Romilly, so we're able to come back to those analyses for research. But other research uh, documents have already uh, looked at exactly the same setup where we have pre-tank collection of effluent. So this was ammoniac and now if we look at the difference between the C22, so that was our uh, test facility compared to the T22, there's a drop of 29%, so that's considerable. 36% if you go down to 18 degrees, so again that's our climate controlled room as our climatotech and 42% if you go down to 16 degrees again we're able to keep it at 16 degrees maintained at the temperature over the entire period so there is a significant impact when you drop temperatures and again when you look at research there are a few people who have actually worked on cold temperatures most times around 22 degrees there was one study by Pouliot and et and others looked at three different temperatures, hot at 22 to 20, one intermediate temperature, 21.2 to 17.2, and one area called cold, which was 21.1 to 14.4. And as you can see on the graph to the bottom left of my screen, those temperatures dropped during the growth, the growing period, but then they actually plateaued out during the fattening period or the finishing period. So overall, you can see that there is a 23% drop of ammoniac in cold rooms compared to hot rooms. So that is perfectly in line with what our study showed. And we can even take it even further because we, uh, we looked at 16 degrees, but this study actually dropped down to 14 degrees. Moving on to NN2O in terms of kilograms, and we had the various indexes there and you can see the difference between each room pretty much the same level so there's no significant effect coming from temperature and Pouliot and Al actually confirms that that there's no effect on N2O and they actually had the same three temperature ranges. Now if we look at methane so we at 3.42 the reference is 2 to 4 when we look at other research and then if we compare it to the other temperatures like we did for the others once again, we see that there is a considerable drop in methane present in those chambers, 
with minus 27%, 53%, 51% for the C22, 18 and 16 respectively. So that way we can say that there is a drop in methane with lower temperatures. The Paleoten L study showed that there was a 42% drop in cold rooms, which was a little less than what we saw, but it shows that if you can keep the temperatures low, you can keep methane in effluent and not in the air. Again, if we look at the straw sludge, then you end up with a or slurry, you end up with about 540 litres per pig, and this was co at, compared to 480 from this 2013 study by Lavasseur. But when we look at the different temperatures, again, a considerable drop in slurry content when you go down in temperature. Now, if we try and compare that to how much water they drink, we're at 8.1 in our T22 room, which is a bit above what was shown in Masabi and Al in 2014, but simply because if you have if you drink more water then they're going to produce more slurry so it makes sense but as they drink less water in the colder rooms you can also see a considerable drop in not only the slurry but also the water intake and obviously that is all much lower than the control room so less water less slurry about 25 percent less so what we can say from that well all of this goes to show that we can actually have thermo or temperature controlled rooms and they do actually have benefits and now there is no uh, alteration on actual growth again statistics uh, the level of statistical data that we have there is limited because we didn't have a large cohort going through them however that we did see that there was a considerable impact in dropping ammoniac and methane emissions and also considerable drop in terms of Sludge or slurry. Now, that said, we can also go on to new tests to have additional data on the zootechnical performance, especially when looking at the conversion ratio. What we would like to look at is to look at temperature differences in your more traditional rooms, not in our climate control chambers. And it would be good to look at other rooms with more conventional aeration to see if the effects are still there. Maybe they probably would be a bit less, less of an impact, but hopefully we'll see a drop in ammoniac and methane. And I would like to say that's it for me. I'm so sorry for the technical hitches we had at the beginning.